We can create either a C++ or Delphi multi-device application to work with our Amazon Simple Storage service. This time I'm going to go for a new multi-device application, Delphi. I'm going to go for a blank application template and I need to save my uh, application uh, in a new folder. I'm going to create a folder called uh, S3 Test Delphi. Okay, so I'm going to keep the unit name as the name of the main form and the project will be S3 Delphi and that's fine. Okay, so that's my uh, project. So the very first thing I need to do is to put an Amazon connection info on the form. In the cloud category, in the tool palette, there are two components, T Azure connection info for working with Microsoft Azure cloud and Amazon connection info. I need to double click on Amazon connection info to put it to the form. In a production code, I would probably put this Amazon connection info on a dedicated data module, but for a simplicity, I'm going to keep it on the main form. Now I can go into my um, credentials that I have uh, just uh, copied. I'm going to copy the access key ID and paste it into the account name property of my Amazon connection info. And I'm going to do the same operation uh, with the uh, key. So this is my secret key. I'm going to copy the key here and put it into the other property of Amazon Connection Info. Okay, that's uh, the first step. So this application is going to be very simple. I'm going to put just a t-edit component on the uh, form and I'm going to upload the contents of the edit to the my new S3 bucket and uh, also download uh, this content uh, from the bucket and display it in a message box. I'm going to put some arbitrary string into a text property of my edit. For example, hello from Rat Studio and Amazon Cloud. So that's the string I'm going to store inside of the cloud. So I'm going to put two buttons on the form, one button for uh, uploading this string to the uh, to the cloud. So I'm going to put an um, upload text and change the name of this button to button upload. And the second, I'm going to put another button for doing the opposite operation. So I'm going to do an button download and change the text property to be download. Okay, so if I double click on a button, uh, I can start uh, writing code. So notice that after adding this uh, component, uh, Amazon connection component to the form, these two uh, files, these two units has been added to the user's clause. If I jump to the Amazon API, I see there are different types here. So specifically, I want to work with Amazon storage service. So this is a class I need to instantiate in my application code to have access to this to the functionality of Amazon Storage uh, Service. So there are many different uh, methods and uh, properties, but specifically I need to make a call a constructor create and the constructor accepts the connection info that we have already on the form. And then we can call uh, different methods. We can uh, manipulate buckets, but that's something we cannot do because of our limited privileges but we can get object and upload object. So there is plenty of functionality here. Okay, so let's insta uh, def define an S3 uh, object, the Amazon storage, storage service. Okay, so I'm going to instantiate this class dot create and pass here this Amazon connection info that I have already on the form. And after you have created something, you need to make sure it is properly freed. Okay, so this S3 uh, class has a method called upload object. So this method 
uh, accepts a bucket name, so in our case that's going to be Rad Studio Test 1, the object name, so any name to identify our object, and the content which is just a array of bytes. So I'm going to do this upload object and for the bucket name I'm going to define a constants, two constants in fact, bucket bucket uh, name and this is our Rad Studio test then Rad Studio test uh, one, <laughs> Rad Studio test one. Okay, and our object name will be test object, test object one. That's fine. Okay, so now we can start putting here a bucket name bucket name and the object name is fine. But now I need to have a way to convert the text from the edit to just an array of bytes. So I'm going for this, I'm going to use a t string stream class that has all the functionality that I have. I can create an instance of this class and pass an arbitrary string and it has a bytes property that I can use to uh, access this as just a plain uh, array of bytes. So edit one dot text, and now in a third parameter I can just do string string stream bytes, and this is the uh, param the property with a right uh, right uh, signature. Okay, so I want to see if that was actually successful. So if everything went okay, I'm going to show message. Okay, and if it was not okay, then I'm going to show a different message, like upload failed, upload failed. Okay, so let's test uh, our application. So click on run, and I'm going to click on upload, and I got an information okay, so it was uploaded okay. I can in fact verify uh, in my uh, directly uh, in my um, AWS uh, service, uh, so simple storage service, if I now jump into my RAD Studio test bucket, I should see my test object has been just uh, created. Okay, so the second thing to do is to actually uh, um, perform the opposite operation to download, uh, to programmatically download uh, this uh, file. So I'm going to copy um, this code to create a, a Amazon storage service reference and a, a simple uh, and a string stream uh, reference. But this time, uh, I'm not going to. I'm going just to instantiate this st string stream with no uh, parameter. And uh, this time I'm going to call get object. So this is a similar method that takes an, a bucket name, object name, and it also takes the object stream. So I can pass the string stream that is a descendant of a T stream as a, a third a parameter. So I want to do an get object and everything is okay. I need to remove these bytes from here. So if I have downloaded uh, this OK, I'm going to display the contents of the stream. So there is a something called data string or display a message that download failed. OK, so in fact, I have not added code to properly free the string stream. So that something needs to be added to both methods. Okay, let's run this application and if I click on download I see hello from Rad Studio and Amazon Cloud uh, string downloaded from Amazon Simple Storage Service.